Hi, very warm welcome to you. Good morning, it's Gene from Lifestyle Observatory. I've got a special uh, proposal for you guys today, if you're interested in taking that up. Uh, what it revolves around is the 40 degree mark. Um, you know, a few people have said, uh, based on what experiments, well, you know, I did make this public uh, many times on, on this channel. Some of you may remember me showing you that experiment, and some of you may not. Uh, because if you're a new subscriber to the channel. Nevertheless, where we are right now is a little over 10 months away from that 40 degree mark. And it was based on those experiments that that number ever came about to start with. The proposal is this, if we can do a little bit better than what we have done uh, over the recent months in terms of support, I'll recreate that experiment for you. And it's not just a simple thing to do, you know, I have to get a low geared motor, uh, put magnets on it, put it in the close proximity of a compass, and, you know, I can stop it at any point in time and explain what is actually happening. But you could do this experiment at home. If you've got a compass, uh, put a magnet very close to it, and so that the, mag uh, the compass needle is pointing still at north, and then very slowly turn uh, the magnet around and what you'll find is that when it gets to around 40 degrees something very special happens and some people have said to me you can't use this as an experimentation of the earth but I think I very well can because a compass is just an instrument which measures uh, the field line strength um, and allows us to have an eagle pointing in the north direction and there's a magnet underneath it. The Earth's magnetism is directly underneath the compass. So it's in very close proximity to the compass. And that's why it affects the needle. When we're talking in terms of nibidium magnets and the Earth's magnetic field, well, nibidium magnets are a greater Tesla in strength than, would you believe, the Earth's magnetic field. And I've always said this. You know, we're dealing with, first of all, electromagnetism. We know um, in electronics that we have current and voltage and both of these things are very different like uh, amplitude of the current if the amplitude is high and the volts are low it can still kill you uh, if you touch both the positive and negative terminals or terminals of the electric cable if the voltage is high but the ampli amplitude is very low you can hold on to that for as long as you want it won't kill you but the point is this, is that, you know, I will recreate the experiment if we get a little bit more enthusiasm in terms of contributions or donations or, you know, extra patrons, whichever. But it's important that more people understand where that number come from originally. It is based on those experiments and it doesn't matter how many times you create, how many times I've recreated the experiment, the outcome has always been the same. And I say the close proximity of the nibidium magnet in adjacence to a compass is no difference to the Earth's magnetic field being in the adjacent vicinity that affects a compass needle which allows it to point to north. Now, that's the deal. You know, if you want to see that experiment recreated, you want to see what happens when it gets to 40 degrees, when it leaves the weak field lines and go sorry it leaves the strong field lines and goes into the weak field lines if you want to see what happens in the experiment then you know make a contribution or a donation i will gladly show you that now you're looking at the three different images i'll explain what we're looking at in a minute uh, this morning i went over to uh, the british geological survey and in particular i was looking for anything or any information new re in relationship to the earth currently going through its magnetic reversal. I didn't find anything, anything of, that was worth mentioning. I also went over to the European Space Agency to uh, in particular have a look at whether there was anything new in relationship to the Swarm mission. This is three satellites that are uh, in uh, orbit around the Earth and they are monitoring constantly um, the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, the most recent entry was, I believe, to do with uh, magnetic electrical uh, sprite anomaly, which is a lo lightning which comes from the surface of the Earth, discharges up into the atmosphere, and 
it was just by luck that as it was going uh, one of the swarm satellites was going over there the sprite lightning affected a little bit of the equipment and it was recorded um, a little bit of further investigation by the uh, swarm team uh, revealed that it was a lightning strike underneath the satellite and it had obviously interacted with the magnetometers on board that spacecraft um, so there is nothing new nothing new but I did find it interesting reading um, you know their brief and their more uh, experienced um, description of what takes place during a magnetic reversal now you know this organization the European Space Agency uh, seems to think that we've got nothing to worry about and I will quote this despite not having the data uh, uh, spanning back to the last magnetic reversal so Hey, just tell me something guys how would that work in a court of law if we just merely um, speculate on you know whether this is a fact or not how would that work with a jury I don't think that they would swallow that and you know it would have to be fact otherwise you know it would be through straight out you know for them to turn around and say there's nothing to worry about if the earth goes through a magnetic reversal and absolutely nothing to worry about with regards to the human species is just so shocking to me when there is evidence of cardiac arrhythmosis being affected there is evidence of carcinogenic uh, particles causing you know cancers and they will increase as the magnetosphere decreases I did note that what they mentioned uh, that the Earth's magnetic field since the Roman times had lost half its strength than what it's got right now but that was a brief statement what they should have been saying is that now we've recently measured it it's also lost a further 10 to 15 percent maybe even 20 percent and I think that they should also mention the fact of the possibility of how close uh, we are to actual the reversal taking place because they seem to think now that it is 15 to maybe 2,000 years away maybe even longer and they said that even the reversal process when it starts to reverse could take 15,000 to sorry 1,500 years to 2,000 years to reverse and this has already been proven wrong because people have been out in the field studying mar lava flows and they say within weeks you could see um, you know a, a massive difference in the migration of the magnetic north pole you know within weeks um, I did have a video on my website uh, made by Nova and you might be able to find it on there it's well worth going have a look at that video that that uh, company did on the magnetic reversal one thing I will point out that in that video it does show the attempts to recreate a magnetic field similar to the earth using uh, molten heated um, sodium metal I think that they use because it's got a low melting temperature but it failed to produce a magnetosphere like event around the uh, uh, experiment that they was doing I will also add this that the European Space Agency and a lot of other organizations always um, you know give a disclaimer that all their current data is based on supermodels now I just wonder what sort of equipment or sorry what sort of input has gone into these uh, supermodels that predict the outcomes of what is going to happen when simply they don't even know to this point in day or let alone are able to recreate what it is that sets up the Earth's magnetic field. Now on the screen we're looking at three different pictures and I will propose uh, you know, a brand new idea to you. As you can see I've just roughly driven off on the Earth there, the equator and the north and south and then on a plasma charge I've written the north and south and you can see there is an equatorial region in between these two and then on the right side in the green we're just looking at a magnet over a magnetic field viewer and what we've got over in the north is a half circle dome and over in the south a half circle dome I wonder 
if we got a, a, you know a super super large magnetic field viewer and just placed it in front of the earth whether it would have a similar pattern to the plasma charge in the center and on the right side you know the magnetic field viewer i believe it would now what you'll see is an equatorial region where there isn't or, or there is very little magnetic uh, ability of either north or south let's call that the equator of just our sakes and again on the plasma charge we can see a north a half dome over the northern hemisphere a half dome over the southern hemisphere uh, and then an equatorial region there is uh, a plasma discharge coming out the center of there but just that is what creates um, the plasma uh, from the Tesla coil that creates it um, in uh, you know an inert gas I'll show you the video of that in a bit and you can see how they constantly reverse and flick over uh, and they're also in when they're in vicinities of others you know they might have slight effects on you know the actual plasma turning over and then going back over but the point is this the 40 degrees as it's starting to line up if we drew let's do it for argument's sake on the third one uh, where we're looking at the magnetic field viewer so just to explain what we're looking at here first we've got a magnet under a magnetic field viewer so it shows us the magnetic field uh, plumage if you like over the northern and southern hemisphere of the magnet and I've drawn a line from the north uh, and then did a 90 degree uh, angle so that you can see where the equatorial line is and then at 45 degrees I've drew another angle which is halfway between north and 90 degrees I'm sure you're all following me right now but it is when we get to 40 maybe a little bit more sometimes but it always starts to happen around 40 degrees we start to get something very strange happen and what that is is the if we put a compass there and start to rotate the magnet what starts to happen let's say for argument's sake at 45 degree we get a rapid movement from the north it goes straight over the 90 degree and comes out at the south at 45 degree that is the rapid transition from north to south and then it slowly goes back to south I can show you this in the experiments you know in the next couple of days not a problem if people are prepared you know to you know just chip in a few bucks let's see if we can get a bit more enthusiasm from people and I'll gladly reproduce those experiments but what I'm saying is what is happening at 45 degrees is it is leaving the strong field lines of where the magnetic north pole is at that point in time or the strongest field lines and it is starting to enter the cusp of the weak field lines and it's in those weak field lines that we get a rapid migration and at the beginning of the video I showed you how close we were on Google Earth to approaching that 40 degree mark it is at that point we should start to see some major activity uptick much quicker and when we go past that it is only a matter of time before you know I propose based on these experiments that we will get that completed reversal now I don't know what the ESA NASA and the uh, you know and other organizations like NOAA are doing you know they still have been investing large amounts of money trying to prove their case for the Earth's core dynamo and I've discovered something else about our Earth um, and I'll just well okay it might not be absolute fact but I think it stands to reason and what I'm suggesting is that the core of our Earth may not be the contributor to the production of the magnetic fields that we've got uh, this is probably gonna blow some of you away I believe it's to do with gravity and the nature of gravity and you know when I showed you that lightning uh, discharge the other day that fits in perfect with the model which I'll show you over the next few days but I'll just show you uh, then I mean if we're talking gravity as a plasma that's where we're going with this yeah what I'm saying is that the earth has 
a large surface area and therefore it can hold a large surface charge. It's that charge or that plasma that not only creates gravity but it also uh, creates um, the um, the mechanics for a, a magnetic north and south pole to form. I just want to show you uh, in a quick clip before we end the video what is going on in a plasma ball when you slow it down under the influence of a high magnetic source. So let me explain what we're looking at. We're looking at the center of a you know an ordinary toy plasma ball if you want to call it that. But what I've done is I've uh, brought in the vicinity of the Tesla coil at the bottom a large um, magnetic um, material which I'm able to control the level of um, magnetism directly on the, t on the Tesla coil and what this does is it slows down the plasma now you can clearly see on this plasma it's not made up of just a particular charge it's made up of two charges separated at a 90 degree angle or it has like our earth an equatorial region where it separates the north from the south now i said that this uh, i believe is not created on the core of our earth what's taking place is not happening on the core of our earth it's probably happening on the surface and that is because of the charge that has been allowed to accumulate over the surface. Now, first of all, our Earth has a gravitational force of 9.8 meters per second. And I said that, you know, what regulates the amount of gravitational force is the extent of the surface area. So if we've got a smaller object, it should have a less gravity. So when we compare the Earth with the Moon's gravitational force, the Earth having 9.8 meters per second force of gravity, compared to the Moon's 1.5 meters per second, we can also take from that that the, uh, uh, the Earth has a larger surface area, therefore it's allowed to store up more charge. The Moon has a smaller area, so it can only hold a smaller charge. I can uh, recreate this in experiments using capacitors I, and simply if you unfold a capacitor you'll see it's made up of a dielectric and a conductive material and it will be a certain amount but if you get a larger capacitor and unravel that you'll see that the surface area that has been rolled over itself is a lot larger than the smaller and that's why it's able to cope with more load than the smaller one. Now, when we was looking at the uh, lightning bolts a couple of videos back and we saw the discharge from Earth, this, what I believe is taking place, is that we are still generating a charge through friction of the mantle uh, coming into contact with the inner core of our Earth, which is active, we know that. And as a result of that, it creates friction which goes through the mantle to the surface and it builds up. When there's too much charge on the surface, it has to release it in some form of way. That could be uh, what we are seeing when we see lightning come out of the ground and go up into the sky. It's called a sprite. Um, and that's what has recently affected you know, the swarm mission satellites. But, but, but this is theoretical. We're still doing work on this. But, you know, I bet you if we based a computer modeling system on what we are seeing here with those uh, plasma charges on the Tesla coil in front of us, we could probably get a more accurate um, uh, presentation as to, you know, how the Earth goes through its reversal. We can see that on the Tesla coil in this video that the charge is reversing spontaneously. At any given point in time and I bet you if we slowed the video right the way down we would see that just before it reversed something happened around about 45 or 40 degrees to its equatorial region as it rotates slowly I bet you we would but that's you know something I just thought I'd want to share with you this is completely new territory you know I'm just looking for other alternatives as to what could be generating you know, the magnetosphere to start with and in turn allowing us to have 
dipoles which we now are witnessing first hand for the first time in human history you know poles reverse on a planet but i will say this i disagree massively with the other organizations in that this will be a minor event because if they are right in one hand let's give them the, let's give them that let's just say they are right in one hand and it takes 1500 to 2000 years to reverse even though they agree that at, during that time the magnetosphere will be around 5 to 10% if that can you imagine living in an environment without that protective field that we enjoy today do you know what could happen to our atmosphere if we lost that for 1500 to 2000 years do you know what would happen to all biodiversity living in an environment which was subject to that sort of torment by cosmic rays it would be almost unbearable unlivable and i don't think that any species probably would have survived such a long period of time i believe the reversal happens a lot quicker i've seen evidence conducted by field scientists studying lava flows to suggest that is the case and we want to pray that that is the case because if it does take 15 to 2000 years there will be a lot of biodiversity let's just put it this way sterilized as a result of it guys if you want me to recreate that experiment, it does require a bit of my time. I've got to sort out a few things and build a couple of things just so I can give you a good demonstration. And all this I'm saying is, you know, show a bit of enthusiasm here, guys. I have put so much work into this to over 10 years to this day. You know, if we can generate a little bit of wealth uh, for the observatory uh, over the next couple of days, I'll be back with... I. I believe something really stunning to show you okay I'll leave it with you guys you have an amazing day as always take care of your loved ones start putting up a little bit of provisions now I believe you know 10 months out is a good time to if you've not already and you know what could be the worst what really could be the worst as always bye for now